Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in. Because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike. Mike Zlatnik. And today it is my pleasure and a privilege to welcome back my really good friend, Corey Boatwright. Hi, Corey. Mike, what is going on? Thanks for having me back. I appreciate you. Thank you for so much for coming on the podcast. You were the first guest on the podcast, and you've been on the podcast multiple times. And I'm really grateful uh, to you for coming back. So what's uh, new and exciting in the world of Corey Boatwright? <laughs> world of Corey Boatwright. It's always, I always uh, I say I'm moving and grooving. People say, how, how are things going? My 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 uh, regular answer is moving and grooving because it feels like that's that's what, what, what happens. So um, we finished out uh, 2021 with a pretty big uh, number for our uh, gross profit um, in uh, the single family side. And then 2022, we're down about 30%. Um, and I've been talking to other companies. It seems like 20, 30% is about the number. Some of them are as well. The market's definitely changed a lot since January. Um, and so that's uh, that's affected our sales uh, in 2021. I feel like that was a market that we're probably not going to see again. We had, um, you know, with, I have two different companies, right? We have our single family business and then we have our, um, our commercial business, our single family business. What I'm talking about now, it's primarily a wholesaling company. And we, we've wholesaled in over 30 different States in the United States. And that's a lot of things going on, moving parts, title companies and, and, uh, processes. Um, uh, and, we uh in 2021 we had you know some pretty good six figure rips for wholesaling which is pretty pretty exciting um but in 2022 you're obviously seeing a lot less of that and i don't think we're we're going to you know see uh a lot of that at all um as we start to move kind of more towards these rates being higher um investors are tightening up on uh, what they're willing to pay for properties and in general, even uh, people are buying off the MLS, they still had to get financing. And now with some of those guys being self-employed that don't have to show tax returns, that's a good thing because you can work with a broker and not have to necessarily go through all the red tape. The bad thing is you're going to pay for it on the rate side. So you're going to end up paying, you know, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine percent rates, which are used to be called hard money rates only a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you're actually saying we can refi into permanent 30 year for eight and a half percent. Doesn't sound very sexy. Um, and if you look at what that does for your profitability on what you're paying interest, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, devastating um, if you're planning on necessarily holding for a long term. But like everything, you have to have a plan on this. So we've adjusted uh, our buy box. And uh, for different markets, uh, to simplify it, you know, East and West Coast was basically we're able to sell stuff between, you know, it's kind of micro markets, but we're able to sell stuff between 85 and 90 cents on the dollar um, off the MLS for the East and West Coast or any Sunbelt states or anything by the water. Now we have adjusted that about 10 to 15 percent. Um, and so uh, we've had to adjust our buy box. We've had to um, create a buffer uh for for being able to uh, acquire and uh, be able to turn around and resell quickly for our wholesaling operation in the midwest that number now has dropped down um you know instead of selling stuff between uh 70 and 75 cents on the dollar now we're you know selling stuff closer to that 65 to 70 cents on the dollar so it's it's everything's being adjusted and so you got to buy deeper and you got to basically get better at uh, negotiating, buying, all these things. Um, and so it's a big factor for uh, single family. On the commercial side, super excited uh, about our biggest acquisition. Uh, just recently, we took down uh, a little over 300 units, uh, boat and RV storage in uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, in my backyard. Uh, a friend of mine uh, came to me and said he had, he had a deal that is right in my backyard, wanted me to be a part of it. I, I was excited about it and uh, we ended up actually syndicating that deal, but we did a mom and pop um, split. We did a 50-50 mom and pop sp uh, split 
and uh, we didn't bring in a whole lot of investors. Uh, we ended up raising a few million dollars, basically, uh, uh, to be able to take down that deal, as as well as putting our own efforts and and um, money in, into it. And uh, we ended up buying that trend that deal. It was great because we um, figured out that it was attractive because it was near retail of what it was worth as per se um, what it would appraise for, uh, which was a little over $6 million. And what we're buying it for is in that, in that ballpark. But what was exciting is that the rents haven't been raised for Cope since COVID and they were significantly under where market rent was. We also had a hundred percent occupied um, for these units and it's boat and RV storage. So that's a unique asset class where the location is super important. This happened to be a really excellent location. The units were were nice and uh, right next to, very, very close to a lake and right by the highway. And so we had a backup list of people that wanted to be in this, uh, Mike. And uh, uh, so we had a backup list. So that's great. But the rents were significantly below where market rents were. Market rents are around $8 a foot. We came in at around four dollars and seventy cents a foot, so wow. that was a very enticing opportunity for us to be able to actually pay for quote what the property would appraise for. But after obviously raising rents, um, is going to significantly change the ball game. In fact, um, the deal actually has the potential to be a twenty-two million dollar deal, and the, and the reason is is because when we bought it. We also got 17 acres that were also approved, but approved land um, that we can expand the facility. The facility is about 102,000 square feet as is. If we expanded it and doubled the size to 200 uh, and 4,000 square feet or so, that puts us in institutional range. Um, we've already got bids uh, on what that would cost to do that. We already got um, uh, going down that road uh, uh, and, and, and digging into it. And essentially, if we were to go that route, um, we're going to be all in around 12, 12 and a half million dollars on the facility. And at that point, after we raising rents, um, the facility would be worth about twenty two million dollars. So pretty strong. Uh, we did a four to five year uh, kind of look out for the on the prospectus from our investors. Um, and, and there was a pref paid, but it wasn't until obviously we had cash flow. Um, so none of the investors necessarily looking for the cash flow per se for a while, but excited about the opportunity um, because essentially for every hundred thousand dollars, and it was a credit investor, 506 uh, C deal. Um, but essentially for every hundred thousand dollars that the investor is putting in, um, they were going to get back about 140,000 or so. And then they're also getting um, about another um, 50,000 or so for tax depreciation. So it was pretty, pretty attractive for the investor. Um, and then we also had two, uh, levels for, uh, uh, shares. We had, uh, A and A and A one or class one and class two share. One was a hundred thousand dollars. They didn't get a pref 250 was the other share. And they did get an eight pref based on uh, whenever we had cash flow. So exciting deal uh, that we ended up uh, closing on just a couple months ago. And uh, it's been interesting to uh, to kind of from that point, um, getting uh, all of the ACH and everything changed over. That's one thing nice about this deal, Mike, is because most of these uh, cell storage units were all paid. About 90 percent of them were all on debit through the bank. We only had about 10% that wasn't. We immediately eliminated that. So you no longer can send a check in or anything. You have to go from a uh, your bank account, ACE, automatic ACH. Um, so we got that uh, taken care of. And then also raising the rents. We also know we're going to, obviously when you raise rents um, from eight from $4.75 to $8, it's a pretty significant raise. But the people know they've been on the gravy train. Um, they, you know, there's nothing around it, nothing, no comps, nothing around it that's anywhere near um, that that price point. And so they're not going to go anywhere. These are boat and RV stores. This is this is we we house probably over twelve million dollars of assets and all these boat and RV stores. So they're not going anywhere. Um, and even if we do lose uh, the anticipated around ten percent, we know that 
um, we have a backup list um, from there. So December, we should see a pretty significant amount of uh, increase in cash flow. Yeah, congratulations. That's a great update. Thank you for uh, 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 such a detailed summary. So let me go back to the commercial side. Uh, yeah, that's certainly exciting. Uh, if you, you <laughs> buying a facility with the rents have almost double potential uh, is a phenomenal. I mean, it's not, uh, it's a rare find, honestly. I, I, you don't hear that too often where the rents in the area, $8 a foot, and you bought it for four, four and a half. I mean, that, that's a massive uh, discount to uh, fair market value. And I assume it's just like any other storage, it's month to month. So you could basically jack up the rates uh, fairly quickly. And you may, you, 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 are you going directly from four to eight or are you going to do it in steps? No, we're going straight four to eight. And um, they, they don't have any place that they can go. We're going to, we anticipate losing 10%. The company that we're working with on management side has done this before. They manage about 50 different facilities. Um, and so they, they know this game. They know how this works. And um, we have made some CapEx changes. There was a, a code uh, or there was a key old key system that they were using. So people had to physically bring a key to open up the gate. We've changed that now to a code. And so we've made some changes and things um, around to kind of show that we're, you know, make some, making changes over there. But at the, at the end of the day, people know that they've been paying so cheap. They know that, you know, someday the gravy train was going to happen. And so we sent out a letter and said, new sheriffs in town. Here's what the rates are. You're welcome to go somewhere else if you want to. But uh, really, Mike, they, we have a backup list. These are boat and RV. These are $501 million boat and RV storage uh nice assets um that i just uh we just don't really anticipate a huge amount of people leaving yeah my my you know from what i'm hearing it might do sense is that uh doubling the price and losing 10 percent you'll take it all day long right i mean take, take your, it all your cash day flow long. is going to drastically improve uh as soon as you get these rate increases implemented Ma and, massive mike and 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 also as you know what's exciting about commercial is whenever um, you know, it's not necessarily off comps per se of what, you know, there's no kitchens and bathrooms and, you know, living in the, it's, it's off the NOI. Right. And so whenever you, like you say, you double your, your income coming in, uh, essentially you're doubling your, your LOI, NOI. And, um, that makes the value of that property now significantly more. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to be debating on, you know, what's the best decision. Do we, raise the rents after a couple of months come in get a new valuation of the the value of the asset and then you know now we go from you know from a six million to 11 million or so and then make a decision if we want to just sell and leave that other 17 acres and the full expansion for the meat on the bone for the next next person or do we go ahead and move forward double the expansion uh, of the property and then go for the big institutional play in four years yeah, that's a great problem to have. And um, generally speaking, uh, the valuation, again, if you do purely cap rate approach, when you double revenues, uh, you more than double NOI for the yes. reason that uh, leverage, right? The leverage works. Return on equity is essentially gets magnified. So, well, we're not even talking, we're just talking about an eight at an eight dollar a square foot, which if you anticipate rents increasing every single year, we're not even. And I ain't talking that, you know, what that looks like in four years either. So it, it could be a significant, uh, valuable uh, asset, which it is already, but it'd be a significantly more if we decide to, to double the facility. Yeah. Well, congratulations and good luck. And uh, either path you're going to take, I think you're going to do so, so well for the reason that you bought at an incredible price. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you got a steel deal. It, it's, it's a lot of times when, these deals are performant. Increases of 30 to 40% on rent is already a big number. Here you have essentially 100% possibility of rent increase, which is gigantic. It's absolutely almost unheard of. It's, it's huge. And here's the thing. Most people don't ask that question, right? So, for example, the asset that came in, the asset, you know, basically appraised pretty close to what we paid for it. So in one sense, we bought for retail. But this is why it's so important, Mike, to dig into the details of what's going on with that facility. Not only did we get 17 other acres basically ready to go, 
to we're working on basically getting fee simple to, to start building. We don't have to build necessarily the whole thing at one time. If we wanted to, we could build that in stages, but we got 17 acres. Uh, we got another facility that was built during uh, the time when they had a manager on, on site. So it's like a climate. These are not climate controlled for the majority of them, but we have about uh, 40 or 40 or so units that are climate controlled. And that wasn't even considered in our underwriting because there's no money coming in on that uh, that newer building, new facility. So it had a lot of other things, but the biggest piece of it was the rent, the rent being so much lower and the comps in the area, nothing, nothing even near um, uh, that, that, that dollar amount. Uh, so, and the backup of hundred percent occupied um, was just, there's, there's so many great wins, you know, on it. Um, but it's one thing, I think it's important to know that just because something seems like it's retail, like it, you got to dig into those details to find out, um, you know, where you can go to your potential rents. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And <laughs> you should have called me. I probably would have invested even on mom and pop terms at that kind of a discount to the market. As, as, as crazy as it sounds, I'm not a big fan of mom, mom and pop terms, but you can actually come to your investor to show how much potential it, it has. And yeah. if, you, if you find genuinely a gem in the rough, like like you found here, your investors are still going to be pretty happy uh, because uh, the, the upside... I don't know. You, the math you gave me looked a little, little too light. That they're gonna make forty percent return. That sounds a way low. If you gave, yeah, investors- actually, actually, it's it's two. It's so it's a hundred thousand dollars plus their one plus one forty. I'm sorry, so one forty. So it'd be around two forty. So well, about two, two, yeah, right. Two, yeah. two four x, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's it's a two it's two point four x multiple, uh, yeah. which obviously will 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 put the ARR into pretty pretty decent uh, number. So, yes, and then the 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 point that you had, uh, it's a great point that it's not what people what they analyze today; it's what they analyze can be tomorrow, especially yes. uh, if the area supports high rents as is. I mean, that is a, that that's the number one. Uh, no, no work required, just because the, the the rents are so much below the market. It's it's remarkable. What you just said is you you literally the old owners undermanaged the property so much they didn't realize that they had a gem and this is a gem in the rough uh all you have to do here is just take over do a little bit of capex and um um uh, bump up the rents i mean i'd love to have you come back on the podcast and record this again in six months and just lo- would love to see if you if you've oh, actually yeah. been able to get the rents doubled and facility back to almost 100 percent occupancy um but it sounds like if you only lose 10 percent and you double the rent i mean that will be massive yeah, Mike, I'm actually sharing the screen with you and those that probably just hearing you can't obviously see, but this is the facility. This right here um, is was something that was not even considered in our underwriting, a, a massive climate controlled uh, area, brand new, newer, like a 2019 building that was built for an office manager. There's no need for that. When COVID hit, they literally didn't fill it up. Um, so they built this brand new. No one's rented here. This has no money coming in. There's very little, if any, money coming in here, and this is all climate controlled. All of this back here is not climate controlled, um, and so and I can show you here of uh, how big these lots, these wide, these these uh, these bays are, um, or this this um, where where you can bring RVs and storage through here. You want to be able, and this is kind of give you an idea. If you can see, I'll try to zoom in here. If you can see this little RV right here to give you an idea how how massive wide that is that's exciting for people because they they don't want to have to you know have these small little uh areas they try to get through and make a turn and and scratch their you know $400,000 RV um so that that's super important and you can also see um right here for this area that we have uh oh, back wow. here uh, of just a lot of extra people. land um and then we've got uh, this lake. So this lake is Lake Arcadia, one of the really nice ones in in my neck of the woods, which is one of the reasons uh, I was brought onto this. I've lived basically half my life in Edmond, which is where Arcadia is. This is a very popular lake, and they're spending a huge amount of money, over seventy million dollar uh, new money coming in to expand and do water activity, a bunch of things. So this is all upcoming in the next few years, Mike. This is the highway for I thirty five. Basically, anything you can come in from Oklahoma City, go to Tulsa. So it's super convenient for people to come in, go
go right here or they can go right over here to this this really popular lake. Um, and so just to kind of give you another scale here, um, pretty massive facility, 102,000 square feet the way it is. You can see over here, this basically is kind of prepared, uh, not all the way, but you know, get, getting there, we'd have to clear out a few more things. We could essentially, we could essentially double this facility um, with, with not, much, uh, not much effort. And look how close we are to this Lake Arcadia. Um, just, just absolutely uh, fantastic location. So um, the location really matters a whole lot whenever you are, uh, you know, looking at these uh, boat and RV storage. Uh, but this is uh, another, another good picture here. I just thought I want to share that because I think it's, it's really exciting when you start to, uh, you know, dig into these, um, and and you really start to see like a bunch of metal and concrete what it could actually turn out, turn out to be. Um, which is, I tell you, this is that newer facility right here, almost basically new, uh, Mike, that they didn't put a manager in at all. And this is all climate controlled, all basically new back here. Um, that was just a nice little add on that was given to us, uh, wasn't included in the, in the underwriting. Wow, Corey, thank you for sharing. That is for those folks who are going to watch this in the uh, video mode, that this will give them a little perspective. But just even hearing this, yeah, you you found a, a great deal. There's no question about this. Location is phenomenal. The asset has a lot of expansion capability, uh, massively uh, under market rent. And uh, yeah, I think you're probably, your visionary picture, you can take a $6 million purchase and turn it into $22 million in, I don't know, a few short years Yeah, is a is a real possibility. So yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> good luck. And that's, that, that, that's a phenomenal deal. I, honestly, you know, have, having invested into a lot of deals, I don't hear a deal like this come across that often. So yeah. uh, you, you found real gem in the rough. Well, Tra Travis is my partner. He, he's the one that found it. So all, all kudos to him. But I was in my backyard. And so um, definitely uh, 15 minutes or so away from me just couldn't have been a better, a better good fit for what we what we needed. And, and we did. We, we raised everything we needed in a week. Um, obviously, it was pretty hard for people to turn down when they actually saw the the potential and um, it's uh, it's going to be a good one. Everyone's going to come out uh, looking pretty, pretty excited about it. And then the cool thing is, is that, you know, what's cool about whenever you make some people money, they, they tend to ask you if you have anything else or, you know, if they don't need that money, they might invest in something else. So it's, it's cool to be able to, uh, to have, you know, excited about this potential at what we're going to be for whether the exit being a year or the exit being four or five years, Either way, they're still going to win. We're going to win, um, and so it's a it's a good deal. Yeah, I can tell you again, finding deal like this, whether you hold it for uh, one or two years or longer, um, it's it's going to be hard to find similar projects. Uh, it, when you find the, the deal this good, <laughs> you just uh, don't set your expectations. This is not a conveyor belt of finding properties like this. This is no. like, when you find a deal like this, you 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 should be really happy that you found a deal like this. And again, not to say that there are no other great deals. Just it just it's hard to find. Just the statement that you made, not counting the extra acreage, not not counting that other property that not used. Just the fact that you can almost double the rent uh, overnight and only lose ten percent of the um, of the people. That alone is just such a massive statement. That yeah. uh, you you could literally turn uh, you, you're gonna more than double because you, you you took a loan right I assume you how much equity did you raise we did we we did you know and and actually we raised we we actually got some reserve as well um so we what did you, you raise know, in equity what did you what did you get in debt so we we got a loan for around five a little over five million so and really how much not, equity did you raise not much um so we've got two a little over two point three or so. 2.3 million. So 2.3 million, you're all in what around 7.3, something like that. A little under that, but yeah, right in right in there. Yeah. If you if you're gonna double the value, just to double the value or double the rent, uh you, your return on equity, uh, because you have leverage, right? You know, you you gotta create say five million worth of value with only less than two and a half million dollar worth of investment. That alone is 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 three x equity, right? Just 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 right. that that exercise. Yeah, and we got in too before the all the loans were obviously um, you know 
hitting hitting super hard. So we we you know got in on a better on a on a good interest rate for this uh, particular property too. And I'll, I'll mention that uh, we did it with a local bank. Um, and so local banks love 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 uh, Bowdoin no Bridge. Like this, yeah. They love it uh, because it's con- it's reoccurring income that's predictable. What kind um, of rate did you lock in? Uh, that was something with um, uh, Travis, but we were looking at rates um, in the fives, uh, and the, and I think it was locked in at five point seven five, if I wasn't mistaken. It's a phenomenal rate in today's environment. Getting that kind of rate is 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 great. You know, the rates have been moving up so fast. Okay. They're moving up just crazy fast right now. Yeah. So let's and go I back. Also, to- I also believe we got a thirty-year, not a twenty-year AM as well. Um, but uh, it, it's almost it's just it, it, it is almost irrelevant. I, the deal is so good that even if it's twenty-year AM, it doesn't matter. It's it, it's great enough deal. So you 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 got to start cash flowing rather quickly. I mean, the moment you bump up the, these these rents, uh, your, your cash flow will, will all of a sudden just jump to the roof. But let's go back. Uh, so this is a great deal. Let's just chat for just a couple more minutes about the residential, and, and then we'll wrap up. So yeah. the residential. Well, well, before before we go into that, Mike, it is exciting because I know people. I would want to know if I'm listening. So the gross revenue is around 480 that's coming in on it, and our our net's going to be about 250. So essentially, if you bring in another, you know, 480 thousand, you're then that triples, potentially it triples, right? Half, half a million bucks NOI, which is just Pretty exciting. Yeah, but think about this. If you if you if you understood you correctly, you take four eighty and you bump up the rents, you almost double the rent, right? Your right. your cost stays flat, right? Mostly right. flat. Cost stays flat. That's right. So um your 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 costs are what about two two sixty, two fifty, and then in, in that range? Right. Your net triples. You let your 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 rent doubles, but the net triples. Yeah. And unlike apartments, right? Whenever you know, you're you're looking at your expense ratio at like half or something. It's not that way on these boat and RV. I mean, you can actually, believe it or not, you can actually operate at a 70-30 or even a, a 75-25. There's just not a lot of things that break or or, or go wrong um, when it's on a lock. I mean, you know, they don't pay. They're on a lockout. We already had 100% uh, occupied, so there wasn't any issue with uh, that piece, piece of it. Um but once we got rid of the 10% of the people that actually were sending checks in or all of that, now everybody's on the same time on the first of the month, instead of the, uh, instead of things going late on the fifth, the 10th of the month or the 15th of the month where it was, where the guy had before we changed it to the fifth of the month. So it's just, there's a lot of cool little things you can optimize, you know, to just make things better, you know, getting rid of uh, all the regular uh, power that's out there, those big poles that put off a crazy amount of power, changing all those out with LED lighting, just all these little things to optimize and uh, and make your NOI better. Yeah, that makes total sense. Greater efficiency and uh, greater operation. And you're absolutely right. Storage uh, uh, expense uh, growth is very, very moderate. It's just These things don't really require. And that's why the asset class is loved by uh, banks is is that it's it's very hard to screw it up. Uh, it's hard to screw it up <laughs> unless you don't raise rents. <laughs> right, unless you don't raise rents, or like a big tornado just comes through and just wipes everything out. But then you know you got you got insurance. So, well, yeah, hopefully no big tornado. Uh, <laughs> yeah, congratulations again. I'll just take two or three more minutes on on the residential front. So, what do you see happening? I mean, on the residential side, the volume is down. And by the way. The same is true in transaction volume and commercial. The volume is coming down, and that's kind of a known fact. Most of the bids and asks are widening. People are just not transacting the same way as before. And in a residential side, you have to get very careful with the risk of uncertainty, what the future price is going to be. Um, locking anything up and holding it is it becomes uh, a diminishing value asset. So it becomes risky unless you bought deeper. Right. And the sellers generally probably don't want to capitulate too to, to much either. Right. So I'm just curious how how you are adjusting in that sector. Sure. Um, so we've got how do you lower got... the risk and 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 still try to do so. Thirty percent volume drop is not not bad, relatively speaking. But right. on a forward basis, it, the the trend is likely going to continue. The price is going to drop. You have to buy better. The sellers don't want to sell you, and it becomes whoever can tolerate most pain. 
absolutely. So, um, <laughs> people, I, I haven't usually done this with you. Usually we just see each other, but I'll share my screen again. Cause, um, I, uh, I got something to show you and I think it's uh, relevant. So let yeah, me... but talk it through because, uh, this is audio, <laughs> you know, showing video. This is audio. Yeah. You're not going to say, am I, are we going to see any video at all? If we're not, then hey, don't I, I don't know. Uh, okay. That's funny. Okay. That's funny that it won't matter. So it'll just be between us, I guess, but, um, maybe I could talk it through just without this, but I was going to show you our calculator. So we created a, a pretty fairly, fairly sophisticated calculator because you're in different markets. So you can't look at like, one size fits all, you know, 75% minus repairs, minus profit kind of thing on each one of these houses. The problem you have is to, 75% of what? That's a yes, 75% of R, right? 75% of no, R. I know, but 75% yeah. of ARV. The problem yeah. is, what is the ARV? That's the moving target. That's the moving target right now. And, and it's moving down. It's not moving up. That's the problem. We, we, we called it, um, we called it phantom equity. So there's a lot of ghost and phantom equity that we uh, we knew we're gonna we, we we felt pretty confident because we saw such a jump in 2021 that that was gonna start to you know come down or or obviously level or come down, and so we got prepared for something called an investor buffer, and for us it's just a percentage that we can put in to basically tell us where our number needs to be in order to acquire this asset, and knowing that once we get an agreement to acquire it at X amount of dollars, that we've pretty well, I mean, there's times where it doesn't work, but most of the time from our calculator, that it will let us know we've already essentially got that property sold and it meets our criteria, it meets our buy box. Um, now we just got to figure out which direction we want to go with it. If we want to go um, put it on the MLS immediately, which is where, Right now, most of our deals get the most amount of money, or do we want to send it out to, you know, investor lift or these other kind of wholesaling um, disposition platforms? <clears throat> um, and believe it or not, Craigslist is one of the big, uh, bigger things coming back right now. It's like a lot of these things are kind of, you know, there's a revolution, these things coming back um, right now. Craigslist used to be big and then it fell off the planet, uh, fell off the cliff. And now, it's coming back for, you know, where you can find good quality buyers, you know, off of, uh, off of Craigslist. Um, but most of, of the that, buyers are investors, right? Most of what you offer is uh discounted property. You, you, you find it at a better price, create a spread, wholesale it to another investor, and then they do their fix and flip. Yeah. And so, uh, so yes, on buying our wholesales at a discount, deep discount. So, Example, here in Oklahoma, let's say we have a $150,000 property. That's what the ARV is. It's fixed up and that's what it'd be worth. What can we pay for it? We Right now, we pay about 68% of ARV. And then let's say that that property is 1,000 uh, square feet. So let's just say 150,000 times 68% is um, 102 it's a thousand square feet and we categorize it into pretty yucky or scary. So let's say it's a yucky property. We're going to use a dollar of about $20 a square foot. So another 20,000 off the 102. And uh, now we're at 82. And now if we want to make a profit, which usually is a minimum of 10, now we're at 10. Now we need to buy that for 72,000. So we know if we get that property at 72,000, which is, basically right under 50% of ARV, if you want to look at it that way. Um, we already know that that property is going to sell, right? Obviously above our 10. So we already got 10 built in, but we already know it's going to sell, you know, probably somewhere in that uh, ballpark of, you know, 89 to $99,000. Now, if we bought it for 70, now remember they're, they're obviously it's worth 150. They, they, they may, when they call in, they may say they want, they absolutely, you know, have to have at least 110,000 for it. Well, obviously if we need to buy it for 72 and they're at 110,000, that's a Delta of um, about, what is it? About the $38,000 big Delta. Right. Mm -hmm. So most people, they'd be like, well, Sorry, you know, it just won't work. We might be able to go up to 75, but we can't certainly come up to $38,000 more. Well, what 
I created a program called RBP, which stands for Retail Buyer Profits. And what we've allowed ourselves to uh, understand, especially by and around the country, is some of these properties that are in a pretty or a step above a yucky category, okay, they will qualify for FHA, VA, um, USDA, they'll qualify for non-conventional financing. You follow me? Yes. So they'll qualify for government backed loans. Um, but whenever you're wholesaling, Mike, you know that you have to own the property for a certain amount of time, usually 60 days, yeah, yeah. 60 days, uh, for them to qualify to get that loan. Now, some of these people have been doing um, a program called Novation. So they might be familiar with kind of what that is, but we don't do a Novation per se. We use what's called a retail buyer program. And we came up with the retail buyer program because we wanted to be able to sell these properties, these re these uh, buyers that want to use these loans that were both basically require seasoning or other red tape. We want to be able to sell our wholesale deals to them. And especially whenever we're listing them on the MLS, um, because we have an attorney. In fact, we have the ability to be able to do that for the well, owner. How so do you do that? The property. We have an attorney. In fact. So we use that what's called an AIF. The owner actually gives us their ability, their right to to list the property on the market for them, and they know that because in our agreement, it's testing the market. It doesn't affect their price, um, what we agreed on with them, um, in terms of anything lower. We pay for all the expenses that have to do with commissions, concessions, etc., and so it gives us the ability to market on the MLS pretty much anywhere in in the country. Um, based on that, what we can now do is we can see where, quote, what we call a retail wholesale. So a retail wholesale, what a buyer will come in and pay for that property. Now, when it's on the MLS, those buyers are not the same we found as the investors that you send out an email to, right? Those buyers are used to paying maybe 10 cents to 15 cents off, you know, 85 cents on the dollar might consider a big discount. Are you them. selling it to the FHA buyer or are you selling it yes. to the retailer? So, so we're if you're selling, selling it to the FHA it's... buyer, uh, they get an FHA loan. Uh, the house obviously has to pass the FHA uh, standards. So yes. I assume you make those improvements to meet the FHA requirements. And then uh, again, I'm just, I'm just trying trying to, to get to the point because we, we, we have, finite time we're beginning to run oh yeah out. sure sure sorry so yeah so basically we uh we we are able to sell to those fha and uh and va buyers we are able to come in and do repairs for them um and basically help help them qualify for that uh property we're able to actually pay the owner more money so in that particular example um if we already know that we can probably sell that property to an fha buyer for maybe 130 right anything under 130 we know uh, less maybe what repairs we're considering, we know we can pay more. So we might be able to pay ninety to ninety five thousand dollars for that property, um, and and actually get more deals done that way. So about twenty to twenty four percent of our deals right now are done through RBP. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it, it's uh, uh, no nobody wants to take anything down anymore. It's just people looking at innovation or this. They're pretty similar concepts. Similar, they're, they're similar concepts. Concept. Yeah, just just basically don't take control get it get it under contract remember the good old short sale day the short short, short sale I days do. it's I a do. very similar concept you you get it under contract to buy and then the, the, you know the guest gives you short sale approval and then you you could you did double close or but the concept is the same you don't you, you basically don't want to hold hold the property you don't want to take the risk you 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 are a good marketer you find the right buyer for it but the technique itself is to minimize the risk of holding the property. There, there is risk involved, right? Like if we have to pay for a roof or an AC or something like that, I mean, we have to we have to decide if that risk is worth it for the upside. Yeah, understood. And, and it's a similar concept to, I don't know, you obviously know guys who have done it, Martin and, and the price lift concept. It's the same idea. It's just you come to an existing yeah. property and you, you bring it to a better condition without taking the title. And it uh, makes total sense. It's, it's by the way, it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, but again, uh, the most exciting part of this episode is going to be that self storage for the, the RV <laughs> yeah. and, and boat storage facility. So, 
Congrats again. Uh, how would folks get a hold of you if they want to learn uh, yeah. one of these programs? Um, what's the best way to uh, reach out? Uh, so we're actually doing our relaunch on the 15th of November with my um, one of my partners, Sean Terry, uh, for RBP. So they can go to uh, rbprofits.com and that that whole webinar and things coming up on the 15th of uh, this, this month. So we're excited about that. But if they want to get in touch with me, they can just type my name in um, pretty much on social media. Uh, it's kind of fairly unique name, so it usually pops right up. Um, they can go to um, our commercial site, which is investingcapitalgroup.com. And uh, well, I'd love to actually have some people go there and fill out what we call our uh, what we call our investor. Um, it's our investor uh, form that they fill out, and it allows us to kind of see what they are uh, buying and and what they're interested in and um you know what they're look, 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 looking for so we can work together that's great thank you Corey, for sharing and uh good luck with the uh with this project uh yeah it's almost like you don't need any luck you you're gonna do well so it, it, uh, congratulations and keep me posted and uh let folks folks reach out to Corey. uh he's a sharp cat as you could as you could you could hear and uh yeah we've been friends for a long time and yeah. getting a deal like this is a is an example of why he's a sharp cat so um and then the educational program him and sean uh known sean for years too so it's it's a it's a it's a great it's a great program if, if you're interested to learn to do things actively reach out and uh, talk to them so thank you thank you Corey. thanks mike appreciate you Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fund Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fund book, head to BigMikeFund.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot name. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.